Sure shot, baby. So good day, everyone. We're here for another episode of the DVD show. So for today, we have one of the best liberos from DLSU in her college days, and she played for numerous teams in the Philippine Volleyball League now. And before, she used to play for Pocari Sweat and Cream Line. So I'll now welcome Miss Melissa Gohing Nasino. Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Hello. So, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for accepting the invitation. So. I, for, to start things off, I'd want to ask lang, how you how have you been doing in this pandemic, especially since you know, one past one year na, na we're stuck at home. How have you been coping with this pandemic? To be honest, the last year was the adjustment period. Kasi I'm super used to not being at home. Lagi ako lumalabas. And then now, parang yun na, I've coped up and I have ways to keep myself busy, even at home, and trying to stay positive and maybe working on myself. And uh, yun, parang it's also a silver lining because it's a way for us to stop and realize things. You know, and that my realizations and um, um, I'm 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 and well for others for sure. Hindi I I cannot. Say, I cannot say everybody's okay nowadays, but I'm praying for everybody who's not okay um, during this time. Yeah, so you mentioned that yung adjusting period was kind mahirap last year. So, are there any new activities na bago that, you know, hobbies that you got into nung time na yun, Or was it all the same stuff you've been doing the past years? I think what really... Um, struck me was when kasi I played for Motolite last year and then this bad team this year. But last year we had a team meeting every Thursday with our um sports side coach um and sobrang uh, helpful. Parang a way of coping up during this time is that you make a space in between the things that you can't control so you can so you can react to it na the right way. Hindi yung magagalit ka kagad. Like, if you're gonna read bad news, hindi ka magreact kagad and it won't affect you that much. So yun. Um, it really helped me. And then, up until now, yun pa rin. And hindi na ako ganun na stress about um, what's happening. And then, hobbies. I, I, I've been into plants before pa magkaroon ng plant demic. Yeah. So I've been a collector, low-key collector, and you know, just taking care of my plants, and then started reading books again that that I wasn't able to do, and I learned a lot of um, new new ingredients or or natuto ako mag magluto ng mas marami pa na hindi ko talaga nagagawa during you know nor- normal days before the pandemic. Kaya yun. I'm keeping myself busy and productive every day. Yeah, that, that's great because it's really hard to keep saying like now. Because I mean, I have class, but sometimes you may not know what I'm going to do. Maybe YouTube or Netflix or something. So at least you're, you're able to do new things even in this pandemic. So I wanted to ask Lang also about since in the news, all the articles about you are like you're newly married with. Yeah, Rocco Nasil, you know, and I wanted mm-hmm. to ask lang how has been the married life like for you personally? How have you been adjusting and kamusta naman yung pagiging wife? First, it's super great um, uh, to, to have someone uh, you can lean on, especially during this time. And we're both fun, eh. Para kami yung magkabarkada lang. So, oh. um, there's, uh, para, there's never a dull moment with him. Uh, parehas kaming ugali eh. He's like my guy version and that's what I've been telling to everybody. Kaya, dami namin nagagawa together kahit nasa bahay lang kami, kahit dito yeah. lang kami. And, you know, uh, marriage is fun but, but syempre, may ups and downs pero 
thankfully up until now wala na kaming problema they like, were happy yeah. and second it's super hard to change your name and all of your IDs from going to Nasino <laughs> all of your documents I didn't know it it's that hard and you know adaming adaming papers I said and yeah very very happy to be uh, a Mrs. Nasino <laughs> Kamusta naman yung planning of the wedding? Kasi syempre, di ba, pandemic. So is it like times 10 harder compared to a normal life? And how did you get through it naman? And you said nga, the documents is also one of the hard things also that you've, you've done as a newlywed. So how was the whole process like? Well, originally, um, originally we just wanted a simple civil wedding sa judge. But then my husband, of course, ano siya eh, career mode siya, katulad ko. We're both na, we want the best for each other. So, um, he he wanted something that we won't forget and kakaiba. That's why, um, um, as you can see, it was on the ship, and, yeah. on, on a naval ship, mm-hmm. and um, we didn't hire a wedding coordinator. It's just both of us. Oh. Ulti mo pag-print ng mga work, yung flow, wedding ng flow ng wedding kami. And we're just very grateful na okay yung, yung ano namin. Okay yung suppliers namin. Nice print. Gideon Hermosa. They helped us and made everything easier. And we, we it's, it's more parang iba nga pag, pag small wedding lang. Pag, pag family. Iba rin. Kasi sa big wedding. I've heard a lot of stories pag big wedding. Hindi ka rin makaka- bond with your family kasi you be busy going around but this one intimate wedding during the pandemic is different it's a different feeling yeah, so i am happy naman that you guys are doing well especially yeah it's really tough to plan those things especially the pandemic and people are uh, having a difficult time to adjust also with the new like environment and all the new stuff happening mm-hmm. But now, naman, since we've discussed a lot about what you've been happen- happening in your life presently and currently, it's nice to also look back on how you started with volleyball, especially now, maganda pag-usapan yung mga stories ng athletes and their humble beginnings. So first of all, I wanted to ask you, lang, um, what were your activities as a child? Like, yung, was volleyball your first love or were you interested in other things like arts or theater and all these other activities or volleyball na ba talaga yung nagustuhan mo? It was all an accident. Parang na, sa totoo lang na in, I was a ballet dancer, a cheer dancer and nahilig ako mag-paint sa mga art class. So, I was more on the art side na field. And then, yung mga seatmates ko kasi around me, I was in um, grade 6. Tapos, seatmates around me were playing volleyball na sa volleyball team. And they were like, Why don't you join us? Para ganas ko, ooh, friends. Kasi friends, para yeah. bilis ko ma-invite, di ba? So, game, game. And then after that, that parang I felt different. Parang an, a, a new love nung nag-train ako. And then, I'm very competitive as a person. Siguro kasi the way my dad um, um, taught us growing up na kailangan competitive. He was like, you need to be the best, parang gano'n-gano'n. Kaya parang nadala ko rin sa volleyball in a good way kasi I really worked hard for it and I had a goal. And kaya yun, yun yung story. It was all an asset. It was God's plan for me and I I never thought na it would help me in in my life. So yung competitive spirit, nadala mo yun for sure sa Lasal because I don't know, based from an audience, I could see na alagang competitive ka nung time mo sa DLSU and even sa professional ranks. Pero sa high school, nung pumunta ka sa Hope Christian, ano naman yung story para mapunta ka doon? Did you get recruited or did you try out or something? Um, in in Hope, um, yun nga, I was invited by my friend and then yun, and then um, Coach Jerry was a strict coach so uh, he taught me discipline. So nag-start tayo yung pag very Discipline siya, bawal malit, ganyan-ganyan. And also, personality mo, yung character mo. Um, he, that's why it wasn't that big of a difference when I went to La Salle under Coach Ramil's system. Kasi medyo similar lang sila ni Coach Jay na sobrang strict na kailangan. Alam mo yun, champion mindset. 
So, yun. Uh, um, if you heard parang hope ko siyang um, back in my day, naging yeah. champion sa lahat yeah. ng ng tournament and also even palaro pa bansa. So, um, I was lucky enough to be, it's not a big school. It's a, enough, it's a small school. Pero, it's, it's really big in in volleyball so i was just, i was just really lucky <laughs> so throughout your whole high school tenure with coach jerry uh what could you say were the best memories in your whole stint there or and also along with that uh ano yung mga best lessons na natutunan niya um excluding siguro yung pagiging niya, winning mentality niya, if you have others that you could share also parang uh may just think sila ni Coach Amelia, you need to be uh, a good person also outside the court and have a good relationship with your with your teammates because it really shows inside the court. Parang ganun yung memory ko from high school to to college and I'm very grateful for that lesson na talagang nag-affect parang you're not just a good athlete but also a good person. About naman yung sa memories mo sa high school, ano yung mga favorite mo na mga championships or awards or events or what could you share naman with the, about that? Ako, um, ang daming championship na memories with my teammates and um, yung, yung tandem namin ni Jamanea Ferrer, yun yung sobrang okay. Up until now, we're, we're really good friends. Um, yung tipong parang yung moment na inside the court na magkitingin nila kami and we know and we have our own play as the libero and setter yung magda-drop siya. Mga ganong moments na maalala ko pa rin uh, up until now and of course winning palarong bansa is every athlete's dream to uh, represent a region and win a championship sa buong Philippines and grabe, grabe yung pressure kapag palarong bansa compared to yung sa mga tournaments sa 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 NCR iba yung palo pambata and you will also meet a lot of players that will inspire you as well for example may mga naging friends ako from Bacolod because I'm I'm an Ilonggo so I was able to talk to them in Ilonggo um Cebuano I I know how to understand a little bit kasi medyo similar lang Ilonggo yeah. so inspiring yung mga stories sa mga ibang players sa um sa provinces because iba yung support sa sa city sa Manila compared to the to to the province from provinces and also they have the same dreams as you are so very inspiring then yung palarong pabansa experience yeah for sure and daming na recruit din eh, sa UAP college tapos parang di mo mm-hmm. masyadong alam tapos pagdating sa UAT pag nabigyan ng opportunity that's where they flourish tapos na they discover yung talent nila hmm. yeah. tapos uh, yun Solid yung team namin. Um, Phil Kainglet, Z. Hervasho, Jimenea Ferrer, me, Amanda was there, Amanda Villanueva. Yeah. And there are players na nag na after that. Pero, um, Paulina Soriano, mm. um, kaya solid yung team namin in that time. Yeah. Curious lang ako if how you became a libero. Kasi yung iba, like, parang napilitan lang sila dahil sinabihan sila people don't sometimes people don't um like the libero because def- defense ka lang the whole time pero ikaw how did you grow in love with the position or were you assigned into that position kaya you had no choice or <laughs> i don't know how to explain this but back in high school i was a utility so nag spike ako but then i stay at the back and ah, i don't okay. switch in front as in but i spike sometimes but sa Ganon. So parang yeah, yeah. libero ako na utility ever yeah. since nung high school. Then sa Lasal, na-realize ko na height matters in Lasal. And then sabi oh. ni Coach Emil, if this is your strength and you're gonna grow, you're gonna grow um, from this. Ever since naman nung high school, naitindihan ko yung importance ng defense. Kasi pag walang defense talaga, walang offense. Kaya yun, I accepted the challenge na maging libero. And for sure, Um, I trusted Coach Emil that he knows way better than me. Tapos yun, and talagang di ako marunong mag-dive before nung high school. Hindi ako marunong mag-roll. As in, as in, there are times na uh, umiiyak na ako kasi hindi talaga ako marunong mag-dive. Pero yun, I was lucky that um, I was 
my captain ball that time was Manila Santos and he oh. really she really helped me although from hope din siya hindi kami nagkaabot pero talagang inalagaan niya ako as a little sister during that time that's why I was able to cope up with diving all the diving yung mga new skills na hindi ko pa na hindi ko na tutunan nung high school so moving on to college sa Lasal naman Um, ano naman yung recruitment story mo to Lasal? Kasi like, yung teammates were in the hope that I read and you mentioned parang they went to Ateneo and yung iba sila, Pao Soriano, yung sila Amanda, they went to Adamson. So ikaw naman, ano yung unique recruitment story mo on why you went to DLSU even if they went to other schools? I was, I was just um, lucky kasi back in the day, di ba sa palawang bansa, all of the recruitment na coaches nandun. Tapos yun, may tawag sa amin, Fab Four. So, it's me, Jam, and yeah. then Phil and Z. Yeah. And then, yun, na ano lang talaga na nasa lasal ako napunta. And, may reason si Lord kung bakit ako napunta na nahiwalay ako sa kanila. But, um, yun, thankful ako na sa lasal ako kasi kaya talaga. <laughs> yeah. So, you did consider going to another, the other schools or did anyone offer you pa? Um, we were offered Judge Doce. Nahihiya ako eh. We were offered by all of the schools. Ah, okay. <laughs> ayaw ko, ayaw ko mag I don't wanna <laughs> baka, baka si Binil nag, nag, nag-brag ako pero yeah. yun niya. Um, okay lang. <laughs> um, okay. Yung Fab 5 um, ay Fab 4 kami we were I'm not bragging yeah. <laughs> uh, we were uh, recruited by all of the universities and yeah uh, lucky enough uh, or God's plan na nasa lasal ako were there any differentiating factors like your course or education or your uh, I don't know the culture or something on why you chose lasal I also listened um, I also listened to coach Jerry Um, knowing LaSalle's background, it's a champion team. Um, mm. And sabi niya, you're really gonna grow. Um, may reason, actually, dapat hindi na ako maglalaro nung college because I wanna focus on fashion designing. Eh, wala mm. naman sa LaSalle nun. And wala naman okay na school na pupunta na volleyball team na may fashion design, of course. And then, um, I had a family problem. So, I had to be the um, breadwinner for my family. And then, sabi ng coach ko na if you really want to grow as a player and maybe help your family in the future go to Lasal. Mm. And then I listened to him and I I went to Lasal. Yeah, I think that's a great decision. Joke lang kasi I'm in Lasal also so biased <laughs> lang in this issue. Pero um going on to your stint with DLSU, uh you won four championships there. So yung first season, I you already mentioned that uh, You really like playing with Manila Santos, and in the first season, you guys reached the finals and beat FEU. You were 13 and one, I-, I believe, in the elimination round. So, how was the journey of that season, and how did you guys bounce back? Nung natalo kayo nung game one against FEU. Oh, I can't. Rem- I can. I can still remember every bit of it, because <laughs> it was my first year. I never thought that I would play with the first six. I was just a dreamer. But I don't get expected. Uh-huh. I'm just inspired to be part of the team and work hard. And then suddenly there was one time coach told me, Mel, you're gonna play today. So I was like, <laughs> I went to the CR as in, just like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> just, that's when I started playing. I just enjoyed it. Bata pa eh. Bata pa talaga yun. So, um, sanay din sa pressure because of Coach Shamil, under Coach Shamil. Uh, I uh, under coach Jerry ako so medyo sanay din ako sa pressure and sa crowd so um, I just enjoyed it and then nung natalo kami the next day grabe yung training namin and then while I was doing the drill nakaapak ako ng uh, wild ball na from the drill mm-hmm. tapos na ankle sprain ako I was crying tapos parang ako sobrang importante yung next game tapos I was crying tapos parang sabi ni Coach Emil, meron siya ano eh, talian mo na yung leeg niyan, baka umakit sa ulo. <laughs> so I remember that like, pero ano no, yun, no pain, no gain. So I, won't, I won't think about it. I'll just feel this after the game, but during the yeah. game, I won't feel it. That's yun, parang I remembered Coach Ila hugged me. Ay, Ate Ila. Um, Ate Ila hugged me. Just parang ako, okay, kaya ko to. And yun yung mga 
okay, this yun, the next the next game sobrang ano na sobrang smooth na yung game namin dire diretso na kami and it was Alchi Ilas um last year kaya na ang lakas kasi ng hila niya rin as a captain so kung may kita kami ganun na leader aangat talaga kayo lahat sabay-sabay um she held the team together during the last game and may kita mo talaga na gusto niya manalo sa last year and yun nga he won the championship Was so that her victory. was that her like best attribute kasi some people like syempre nung nanood ng volleyball is nung sumikat na nung time nila Alisa Valdez and nila Mika Reyes that time na pero nung time nila yeah nila Ila Santos medyo hindi pa sikat yung volleyball so how could you maybe describe her play style and her leadership kasi you said nga she's a really great leader and even if she's undersized parang she still excelled at the UAAP level and even now nung pros and nung naglaro siya sa Choco Mucho magaling pa rin siya kahit matagal nang hindi nakapaglaro I always tell people a good leader is not just inside the court but also outside the court because everybody in the team they have their own problems and issues outside volleyball and she's always there for us that's why inside the court para alam mo yon when you see her like that grabe yung respect namin sa kanya That's why kaya kami din, parang nagpupursige for her. Parang karon. Parang yun yung good leader. Even at the chat cruise, yun yung naging captain ko um, after at Chiila. Ganun din siya. So medyo similar sila in a way. Um, and they are all around. Talagang pan- pantay yung skills nila sa lahat. Um, they excel in everything. Kaya um, a good leader talaga. Yeah. Moving on naman to the next season, you had a similar record of 13 and 1, pero you lost to the fi- in the finals against UST. So, first, can you describe gano kalakas yung UST and ano like some people might not know how strong they were, pero from a opponent's perspective, yeah, how will you describe how strong the team was? We really give it to UST because they were solid that time. Ang get sa Bakero, Everybody, yeah. you know, senior na, parang hinug na. That time kasi, we lost actually pa kami sa lahat, sa sistema. And we really give it to USC that time that they really lay their heart, heart out. Kami din naman. But then, mas hinug lang talaga yung team nila that time. So, after that, yun na, naging solid na yung team namin. Uh, we learned from our loss during season 72 and we bounced back. Season 73, dala-dala-cho, 3 Yeah. Nung um, second year, were there specific parts of your game as a team that Coach Ramil pointed out na dapat i-improve niyo? Or talagang feeling niyo you just needed experience in order to uh, gain those uh, experiences in order to win the next three that you eventually won? Um, he always um, tell us to, if you're not, if, 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 it's, it, if, it, if it's not enough now, let's work harder. So for sure, we don't want to pinpoint anyone. Um, we are a team, eh? so um, kami talaga yung make a as a team. So that's why we work hard as a team and then improved as a team. So we don't want to pinpoint up kulang sa defense, kulang sa lahat, ganon ganon. So yeah, improvement lang as a team and maturity. So moving on to the following season, so season 73 naman. Ano yung biggest um, addition or change na sa tingin mo nangyari sa team kung paano nyo na, natalo na yung UST? Or was it just more of nasa, na nahasa na kayo and nakita nyo na that you can really beat them? Nahasa na yung team. Uh, buo na yung team. After, after our loss, I think, we only had two weeks of break or one week of break and we started training again. Like, hard, hard training na building up and then Um, nag-add ng system, nagbago ng drill to improve um, to improve us na kunya, kunya, may, may drill kami na lamang yung kalaban ng five points. And how are we gonna... Tapos hindi kami matatapos. Pag talo kami, we're gonna run from ground floor to ninth floor. Ganun. Wow. May mga drill na kami yun. <laughs> mm, pag natalo kami, sprint kami from ground floor to ninth floor ng, ng sports complex. Kaya... <laughs> May mga bagong drills. Uh, we were trained under pressure. More pressure. Kaya pagdating buo na yung team. 
So, nung uh, season na yun, si Cha Cruz naman yung naging MVP. So, can you maybe expound also on how great she was? Because... Parang siyang jack of... I mean, jack of all days. I mean, lahat talaga ng skills meron siya. She can set. As in, she can set, ah. As in, yeah. good set. She can... She can do defense, real defense. As as in, yung tipong the dive, ang bilis-bilis niya. Sobrang idol ko siya. She mm. can do smart offense, block, mm. completo. So, completo siya. So that's why she deserves to be and to be the MVP. Kaya complete package si Ate siya. Kaya siya naging miss everything. Yeah. Si, yeah, si Chia Cruz talaga. I'm really inspired by her play also. Kasi hindi nga lang on the court. And yun yung kailangan mo sa team captain na nasa leader. Kaya siguro yung Lasal tuloy-tuloy yung championships ng time niya. Because she was galvanizing you guys into one unit, I guess. So, yeah, that's why I believe you guys were successful. Yeah, okay. So, so nung season 74 naman, you guys okay. played uh, Ateneo in the finals, and you were, what, 14-0 the whole time. So, diretsong finals na kaagad yun. So, nung season na yun, how did you guys remain on track to win it? Like, di ba pumasok yung complacency factor throughout the whole season? Do you know that every time we win a championship, lagi sinasabi ni Coach Emil sa amin na you guys are champion now. But then next season, everybody's gonna gonna pull you down. So, um, <laughs> yun yung, the hardest part is being a champion. So, kung gusto yung maging champion pa rin, you guys need to work harder. Kaya we won't be comp- yung ganang mentality na laging sinasabi sa amin ni Coach Emil, yun yung nag-aano sa amin na mag-improve palalo as a player, Um, and as a team. Kaya, meron siyang, hindi siya, by, during my, our time, um, may reverse psychology kasi siya, hindi niya kami pinupuri. Kaya para kami, talaga nag-work hard kami, uh, which is good, kasi hindi, hindi kami nagiging complacent. Um, I think yung pinuri niya lang ako, last year ko na eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Kaya, kaya yun, um, yun, hindi talaga dapat maging complacent if, Eh, and we we we've already learned nung season 71. Yeah, nung yung ibang players then like not in my podcast but in other interviews I've heard na nagugulat sila kasi nung itong early, latter part para nag-high five na siya ng mga players and pero hindi pa rin siya masyadong nagbibigay ng compliments like pag sa post game interviews he doesn't really say na ah, ang galing ni ganyan ganyan. He doesn't do that nga daw para siguro ganahan ka pa mag-perform at a higher level for the following games or in your case, the following season nga. So I guess that's why ganun yung attitude niya. So nung, nung finals naman nung season 74, natalo dun kaya sa Ateneo nung game one. So kamusta naman yung feeling yung team nung time na yon And how did you recover from that loss? Kasi first loss nyo the whole season. The good thing about um, losing during the first game, makikita mo na lahat ng mga, ng mga mistakes mo as a player and yung mistakes as a team. Tapos, we do statistics. We always watch our own game. So, kinaladaman yung game and then kung ano yung adjustments na gagawin. And yeah. makikita mo na kasi during the first game of the finals, yung laro din ng kalaban mo. So, um, siguro by that time, sobrang matured na rin yung, eh, yung player. Parang, parang nag-uusap na yun. Like, it, everything's not um, uh, finid sa amin ni Coach Ramil that time. So, parang, okay, ito gagawin ko, mag adjust ako, dito ka. Pag sige, ito, nasa harap, dito tayo. Parang, parang naging ganun na kami as, yeah. a, um, as a team. Mabilis din kami mag-adjust um, by that time. Kaya, um, we played way better nung game two. And, yun na, smooth na hanggang game three. Yeah. So, nung last season din naman, nanalo rin kayo ng championship na 13-1. and one. Pero I wanted to touch on, kasi nakasabay mo pa sila, Abby Maranio, sila, Nika Reyes. So, kamusta naman naman yung star power nung generation na yun? So, what's your take on how strong they were talent-wise? And syempre, nat- sama na rin yung pagiging uh, maganda yung bonding nila na nadala nila siguro from your batch. I think, Malaking bagay din na nag- naka-dorm kami for like three months before the season. So, well done the team. And we always had dinner together. I said, every day, kasama kami together. And then, may prayer kami, may TBT kami before we sleep. So, malaking bagay din yon. And then, ka-clean yung team. And, 
mababayat yung freshman namin yung sila sila Mika, Ara, they were matured enough to be in the champion team and um nakakatuwa, nakaka-proud kung paano sila maglaro and they had what three to five months of preparation with us to na nasala lang kagad sila sa UAAP and they did they did well they they did really great crowd as an ate yeah i really like that batch of PLS student kasi natuloy tuloy din they were winning also they got a free peat as well from 78 to 80 i think season 78 to season 80 So I guess it was a great learning experience from you guys. Tadala nila. So sana magdala rin sa next generation. Well, pero mm-hmm. hindi nga natuloy pa because there's a pandemic. Pero they were doing okay naman before the pandemic uh, halted the season. So nung time niyo naman with Coach Ramil sa DLSU, um, how was your relation relationship naman with him personally, like on and off the court? Uh, how close were you guys? Or ano yung mga... Um, moments na talagang you really appreciated his presence. Back in our time, he had to, parang medyo strict siya eh. So, unlike now, na talagang iba na kasi yung generation na yun. So, back in our time, there's a wall. I'm the coach, you're the player. But then, we all know that um, he cares for us. But it's his way also um, na sabihin sa amin na I'm the coach. Kasi minsan, eh, hindi mo maiwasan if you're too close na with the coach. Parang nag-iiba na rin yung respect mo sa kanya. Yeah. So, I'm the coach, you're the player. So, by that time, ganun kami. Um, uh, we're not that close sa tipong talagang sasabihin ko sa kanya lahat ng problem ko. But I know that para I have a second father since my family, my family, my my parents are away. So, I know that um he was a second father to me. And my team managers that time, na close ko pa rin up until now. Oh, okay. So, meron ka bang masyashare na Coach Ramil story na nakakatawa or memorable na hindi mo makakalimut? Oh, everybody knows this na, play, na player. So, every time kapag mag-joke siya or may, may ginawa kang mali, lagi yeah. yung word na kamote, ganun. So, <laughs> alam ng lahat ng players to. And nakita mo naman sa tweet ko. Uh, ng ibang players, minsan na-reminisce nila yung sinasabi, kamote ka, kamote, gaganan-ganan siya. So, yun yung expression. nakatawa sa kanya. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unconsciously, yun yung lagi sinasabi niya. In- instead of mura, siguro. <laughs> yeah. At least, hindi yung mura. <laughs> so, nung, pumas- nung nag-graduate ka na sa DLSU and you were one of the best liberos nga sa UAP and you won four out of five championships, pumasok naman si Don Makandili for the next batch and When I interviewed her when here on my podcast as well, she mentioned that I, she was really idolizing you. That's why she's also wearing the number five. So, kamusta naman yung performance niya from your point of view and yung development niya over the years? Because in the first few years, niya, hindi rin naman siya kagad superstar or starter na consistently. Pero nung banda dulo, gumaling na siya hanggang ngayon. Gabe, if she's the best daw in the Philippines. Yeah. And yun nga, I, I'm grateful na I'm honored naman na na-idolize niya that time. But ako din, idol ko din siya ngayon. Yeah. So pagkaling niya, sobrang nag-improve siya. And she's a hard worker. I've heard stories. Kasi syempre, hindi na ako, wala na ako sa team. Pero may mga sabi-sabi, per kwento. Sobrang hard worker siya as a libero and sobrang nag-improve siya talaga. And talagang um, she has that mentality to really die for the ball na talagang sinatapan niya yung sarili niya. And sobrang nakaka-proud na uh, internationally, international may mga awards na siya, mga ganun. So nakaka-proud din. So you know, moving on naman to the uh, ascension of Philippine volleyball here in the Philippines. Kasi syempre sinasabi mo nga na nung time nyo, parang iba pa yung way ng coaching style and even yung reception ng fans. Hindi pa 20,000 yung nanonood every game or sa social media, hindi rin ganun ka uh, active yung mga positive and negative comments. So for you naman, what's the... Uh, a few or yeah, several reasons on why you believe volleyball uh, ascended here in the Philippines in terms of popularity. I remember during several season 73, yeah, season 73 against at 
no, season 74 against Ateneo, tama ba? Okay. Yeah, finals so, against Ateneo. Our first finals with Ateneo that time kasi, um, ABS-CBN really, as in thanks to ABS-CBN, sila talaga nag-hype up ng volleyball. Kasi during, I think that time, alam naman natin na yung rivalry ng Ateneo Lasal sa basketball, di ba? And yeah. that year ata, nalipat yung rivalry sa volleyball. Mm-hmm. Tapos nakakagulat. During finals, first game in Mo. Oh, wow. we were really shocked as in the bus uh, the bus was entering the back gate yeah. tapos na kami bakit ganito yung kadami yung tao parang gano'n gano'n <laughs> sabi niya di namin in-expect ang dami yung pumunta from Cebu Bacolod mga Davao at yung ibang place so abang hinipe up talaga so thankful for ABC then for making um volleyball grow to where it is now Siya, sila talaga yung nagpalaki din. And also the rivalry nung Ateneo Lasal. Iba yeah. talaga. Yeah. So, come, so that I, well, year, yun, yun, yun doon nag-start eh, na sobrang dami na nanonood. Yeah. So you you believe, how do you think naman na yung ibang teams then or like, it's like a domino effect na nadala na rin yung ibang players. Kasi even now sa ibang schools, sumisikat na rin yung ibang players even at the pro level. So sa tingin mo, parang okay. domino effect na rin yun with the... Oo, domino effect na yun. Parang, Parang people started watching volleyball. Oh, volleyball is fun. Ganyan to watch. I mean, it's different than basketball. Mm. Tapos, the crowd is crazy. Kasi nadadala ka rin eh. When, when the crowd, parang maraming crowd, nadadala ka rin sa hype ng crowd. Uh-oh. So, yun. And then, yung recruitment, naging sobrang, oh, lahat talaga domino effect. Like, may kita ng mga players na nasa high school na, oh, look, volleyball is big. I want, I want to be like them someday. Eh, parang gusto sila talaga nag-pursi ganyan. Tapos dumami yung magagaling na players. Tapos yung recruitment, sobrang competitive na rin. Tapos lahat ng teams competitive na sabay-sabay na umangat. So, this, tapos, season 75, after season 75, first semi-pro league na wala dati. Dati, after college, sabi na wala ka ng career after uh, college. Yeah. Pero luckily, after season 75, after my year, nandun na yung PS, PSL? Yeah, PSL. Mm-hmm. And then, nag- ka yung shaky sa game PBL kaya naging dare-diretso na parang parang yung mga tao oh yung idol ko from UAP mag-graduate na siya hindi ko na siya mapapanood pero thanks to ano may another 10 years or 15 years pa sila na mapapanood yung idol nila after UAP and um thanks to ABS kasi ginawa nila yung league yeah for sure ang dami na nanonood ngayon eh kahit minsan yung ibang players nga or teams hindi sila ganun kasikat pa to start off pero na build up pag yung mga fans talaga nanonood whether live or sa TV as pag sa Twitter if you check Twitter pag may game nagte-trending yung mga players na nasa game at naman it's mostly basketball and boxing lang pero now kasama na rin yung volleyball in that category and which is really great kasi I believe like Filipinos love like yung fast paced or yung madaming nangyayari na sports. Like yung mga baseball, hindi ganun ka popular here. Pero volleyball, kasi something happens every second of the game. So parang na-entertain yung Filipinos. Mm-hmm. So nung... True. Yeah. So yung um, national team din natin, I believe, gumagaling. And uh, yung leagues din natin, nag, yeah, it's in one league. Uh, all the teams are in one league na now. So in your opinion naman, uh, how what's the potential of volleyball power? How do you, how else do you think they could maybe get better here in the Philippines? Like will they focus on the men's also or something else? You know what I've learned when I played for China um during the ABC yeah, um with the Philippine team, hmm. grab yung support ng college and uh, and ng commercial teams nila pagdating na is is tatawagin sila ng uh, yung players ng China team go sila but naging problem dito ang daming factors like um dalawa yung league hate tapos yung support ang daming nangyayari so yung hindi 100% full blast yung support for the Philippine team and i'm really happy na iisa na lahat and iba talaga pag may support ng lahat college, gano'n. Ang daming factors din kasi na nag-held back, nag-hold back yung mga players to play for the Philippine team. So kung gano'n na yung support na yun, magiging iba na yun for sure. Yeah, so you mentioned also na you were happy and 
uh, you were happy na nagkaroon ng semi-pro league when you graduated from college and you went to several teams. But the notable ones were the Pocari Sweat Stint and the Cream Line one. So, yung first stint mo, um, did you, what was the uh, situation there and did you, what were the stuff you learned even if hindi ganun ka successful naman yung stints mo there compared to the last two ones? Um, what what I've learned in commercial teams compared to college. College, you play for the name in front of you for for the university that you play. But now it's different when you um play for commercial teams. It's always yeah. give and take. Um, yeah. and also iba na yung culture. You, I learned how to adjust to different cultures ng players. Kasi iba iba naman kami ng sistema ng volleyball and also the culture of the school or ano. So you learn to, to adjust and you learn, uh, you will learn more on how you adjust to different kinds of personalities and cultures. So, uh, mag-a-adjust ka, tapos, um, like for example, uh, sa Pukari, less than half la kaming girls. So, so I mean, love wins sa Pukari, so doon uh. po mas na-appreciate yung um, uh, mga teammates ko na lesbians. So, super fun sila kasama. So, doon ko mas, mas ano talaga, mas nag, nag, parang open, nag-open yung, nag-open yung mind ko sa commercial team. Not just, not just sa, sa loob ng court, but also outside the court. So, yung Pocari sweat stint mo, parang ang dami, parang you won three championships ata in total. What were, what do you think, was the differentiating factor and why natatalon yung lahat ng teams like yung isang season you won both championships yung may import and yung all Filipino and then you won one more so what do you think was the differentiating factor on bakit hindi kayo matalon ng ibang teams for those years funny nga yung first championship namin we were the underdog yeah just that after training we bond we bond as a team friends talaga kami kung may problema yung isa, nandun kami lahat. Ganun kami bonded as a team. Kaya, sasabi ko sila, a champion team, hindi lang yun sa lakas ng players, sa skills ng players, pati yun sa bond and relationship ng players outside the court. So, may kita mo sa loob, pag yung isa, uh, bumababa na yung moral, change namin, ganun kami sa team. Kaya, buo yung team that time, um, we, we weren't, the best lineup sa buong league. Nagkita mo may mga stronger lineup pa sa iba. Pero, pero we really worked hard together as a family. Kaya kami din nanalo ng Pukari. Kaya every time na nanalo kami, we, all, we always um, say na we are a family. Ganyan, ganyan. Kaya um, up until now, I'm still, I'm still, nung kasal ko, yung mga Pukari teammates, sa sobrang touch ko, nagpa, nagpa ano, ang tawag doon, nagpa, what do you call that? Poster? Yung, or... No, no, no. Nagpa, uh, yung nagaan is a screen. It's at the tip of my tongue. Projector. Ah, okay. So, during my wedding, nagpa-projector pa silang lahat. Tapos nagsis celebrate sila with us. May sarili silang handa. Uh, Sobrang sweet nila. Uh. So, yung experience mo naman na yun, Sino yung mga teammates mo na talagang um, were integral to the success of the team, whether on the court or off the court? And syempre, you developed a great relationship then with them. So sino, sino yung mga yun? And what did they bring to the team and to you? Actually, lahat naman eh. Lahat talaga nag, nag ano. Of, of course, we have our star players. Myla. Myla, mm. Iris. Pero for me, lahat sila star eh, that time. As in, magiging proud ka talaga na nag-improve lahat. Tsaka, lahat talaga gusto mananalo, may kita mo sa mata nila. Um, I, I won't say na sige ito lang kaya na kami nanalo. Hmm. Kaya lahat kami nag-provide talaga. Even our, even our second stringer, sobrang cheer-cheer nila kami. Tapos kapag pag, pag ready, ready sila palagi, pag ipapasok sila ni coach, yung tipong yung, yung second stringer namin, hindi sila yung naiingit, yung may mga ganun. Hmm. Uh, very supportive din. Kaya, uh, family talaga kami sa Pokal. Was Coach Romel your coach for all the three championships? Tama ba? Um, si Or coach, two lang? Oo. Coach Rico ata yung last. 
Ah, okay. So, kamusta naman yung change of coaches nun? And talagang nakaset na ba yung culture na nakagbabayin kayo so, sa mga roles niyo Kaya hindi naging masyadong mahirap yung change of coach sa gitna ng championship runs niyo Yung difference, na, medyo similar naman sila eh. Yung, yung kami sa Pokari, they let us play our own game. But they also instruct, okay, ito yung ito, ganun, ganun, ganun. But individually, they want us to play our game. And, you know, na, nag, parang natural na lang na nag, nag-sustink kaming lahat. So, ganun, hindi sila yung, gito ka, gito ka dapat, gito ganun, ganun. Hindi sila, hindi sila ganun na coach. Yun yung difference din kapag nasa commercial ka. Kasi, syempre, veteran ka na eh, as a player. So, you, you shouldn't expect na talagang gito ka, gito eh. Unlike nung high school, nung college, ganun, ganun yung ano sa'yo. So, yun, marunong ka na mag-aral dapat, mag-statistics. Uh, may sarili ka ng uh, mag- mag-aral ka ng game. Ikaw na yun. Hindi, like before, no, college, kailangan buo as a team na manonood ng game. So, yun. So, moving on to Creamline, pum- nag- pumunta ka sa team na full of stars with sila Alisa Valdez, Gia Morado, and Gemma Galanza. So, how was the experience naman with Creamline? Because I believe you guys won a lot of championships as well and your team as well had a lot of superstars or like stars nung college and even nung pro. So, kamusta naman yung experience mo there? And what, yeah, you just talk about like the whole experience. When you're with um, superstars, um, hindi rin sabihin na malalakas yung players na kasama mo. Uh, Kote lang yung effort mo. You also need to be the best. And parang nakaka-pressure din kasi puro superstars. So, ikaw din, kailangan maganda yung laro mo. Kasi people will really... You know, nowadays, konting mali mo lang, especially pag if you are in a star um, studied mm. team, all eyes on you guys. So talaga, you also have to play your game. So ganun yung difference compared sa um, hindi lahat nakatingin sa inyo. So talagang, you can do whatever you want. Parang ganun. So, yung, did Coach Tai, when he was handling you guys, was it a hard for you to adjust at first? Kasi... He, may language barrier ba? Kasi minsan sa Aten- Ateneo, sa, nung nagko-coach, nung nagko-coach siya doon, parang nahihirapan pa yung ibang players sa umpisa. Of course, every ano naman eh, lahat naman talaga pag um, iba, iba, may language barrier, also difference ng culture. Siyempre yung mga iba na matagal na sa kanya, alam na nila siya. Pero yung mga bago pa lang, it will really take time for you to adjust kapag ganun. So yung nakasanay ka na rin. Yeah, yung, yung team niyo. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> hmm, kaya yun, um adjustment lang and then learning lang yung mga uh ku ano yung mga words na sinasabi niya and um ask lang the people that really um knows him kung ano yeah. yung meaning noon yung mga ganun. Yeah, the, sila Alisa for sure parang nasanay na rin yung college eh. So nakakatulong yun. Tsaka alam na rin yung system niya. So, yung volleyball mm. skills and techniques. Mat, matka-guide na rin niya kayo dun sa system niya. So, mm-hmm. nung yung run niyo sa cream line, ano yung favorite time mo ng cream line championships niyo? And why would you say that was the most special one for you? Um, I think all of the championships naman are special. May iba't ibang challenges for per season. And that's what I've all, what I've been Um, telling everybody parang um, everybody worked hard for it siguro yung first kasi yun yung first ko with with Creamline yun yung first uh, championship yun yung siguro yung um, iba kasi pag parang bago tapos bigla ka nanalo parang ganun ganun yung feeling so yung so, play- yung Creamline sin- nga parang ang daming ups and downs pero you said nga you had different challenges along along the way. So, kamusta naman yung uh, how you overcame those challenges? Like, what what did you do as a person or what did you guys do as a as a team? And, um, I don't know, how do you guys recover and still win the championships? Siguro yung difference na when I was in FEMA, yun nga, nahihirapan ako sa new system and also yung language uh, barrier. So, yun, adjust ka lang. Um, and then you you will be part of the system. Hindi yun ang yari nung nasa motolite ako. Iba din yung American system ng volleyball. Sinala coach. Uh, it's a mix of Japanese and 
um, American system. Kasi coach ga di Japanese system. Tapos minimix na lang dalawa ni Coach Air. So, um, it took me probably a month or so to adjust. But then, iba-iba eh. And also yung language. Um, iba pa rin pag makakatagalog ka ng diretso. Mga gano, though, though I know how to speak um, English, of course. Sure, yeah. um, imagine mo po, hihilo ka na. English uh, yeah. <laughs> Sana yan kasi. Yung <laughs> yeah, pagod na pagod ka na. Kasi yeah. try mo i-explain yung sarili mo. Yeah. <laughs> Tapos yun. Um, yun. So, adjust lang. Adjust lang sa new system and the new team. And you'll be, you'll be good. Yeah. So, as you want... Sayang eh. You know what? I, I, I'm always telling people, sayang yung uh, bond dami ng motolite. Kasi sobrang uh, close din. So, super close sa uh, teammates. I was super excited to play with Iris. Iris Solonada, yeah. who was yeah. part of the Pokari uh, champion team. Yeah. And also, my Myla. Um, kaya, sayang. Yeah. So, Did you get to play for motolite? Like, one year lang ba? Or something? I wasn't able to play sa league kasi oh, na covid o oh, but sayang, I was yeah. able to train with them um physically for almost three months. Sayang. Uh, uh, but it was fun. It was fun. No doll. Kasi kalog, dahil ko kalog na teammates doon. Yeah. Na sovereign joker. So kahit nahihirapan kami magjo-joke sila, so matatawa ka na lang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, that really but helps the team. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You can continue. Sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm good. Uh, ah, okay. So uh, as we move on to the final few questions of the interview, uh, these are the questions I normally ask all my all my guests also. So I wanted to also thank you again for coming into the show. Pero the last few questions lang is one of them is the athletes kasi now sa Philippines. Um, feeling ko lang parang they can be more vocal or they can educate their followers more because you said nga earlier na marami ng fans ng volleyball ngayon and even ibang sports. So, kumari, pag may social issues or educating them like how to vote and um, be more aware of the election process and all these things. So, sa NBA kasi, di ba, nung uh, last bubble, there was like issues with Black Lives Matter and then they had the election. Mm-hmm. So, the players were very vocal and I believe it helped kasi they were able to teach people how to vote, ganun. and it can also spell the difference here in the Philippines for the future. Mm-hmm. You never know. So in your opinion, naman, is it okay for athletes to like mix politics, social issues with being an athlete also? For me, I always see, tell people, for me, I always tell um, others, um, as a player, we're also now a public figure because of the sport. But it's up to you. You have a choice if you're gonna use that voice or kung anong example nag position mo yung self mo. If you wanna get into politics because that's you, it's it's fine, it's your choice. But if you wanna be silent about it and ha you know, you wanna it's up to you talaga. It's it's up to you. We all have different perspectives. Um, like me as much as possible. I don't wanna um interfere with other problems that I don't know the backstory or the whole story. I'd rather um, be silent about it. Because I'm, I want to give out positive vibrations only. So instead of ranting on Twitter, which is very toxic um, to me and also to other people when they always see you um, ranting. Parang ganun. So it's up to you if you're going to use that voice. Um, it's up to you if um, anong voice yung ilalabas mo sa ibang tao? Maybe uh, um, politics or not. Uh, or pw- pwede na lang spiritual. Ako, I, I share devotion. There was one time um, I'm just sharing my devotion. Sometimes um, uh, sa stories ko and there was one reply that I was really shocked na thanks to your, thanks to your um, verses I was about because I was about to take my life. So para mm. ko Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the so, I, oh, yeah. so, parang, me then, personally, ayoko rin na sobrang mag on Twitter kasi it's, it's toxic for yourself and also for other mm-hmm. people. It's not okay for your mental health. And, uh, but, I know, I understand people who's dealing with mental health because, issues, because my sister um has 
depression, clinical depression. That's why um as much as possible, ako din as a sister, ayoko yung sobrang nagrarant ganun kasi yung sister ko baka ma- maapektado pa yeah. so instead mm. of ganyan positive yung ano, it's not I'm not saying it's toxic positivity, it's just my choice mm. as a person to to spread positivity instead of Because there was one time, para ako, I don't understand people. Why do they say toxic positivity? It's 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 your way also to make yourself feel bad than other people. It's not it's not saying that this is not the reality. So parang ganon. So and daming issues right now, and all we can do is you know, wala tayong magagawa. Eh. That's why I I put a, I put I put space in between those issues and. It's up to me how I react to it. Parang kano. Yeah, it's really good then to like to raise awareness. Because, of course, the other people are not aware or like they don't accept the things that are happening. Na, like, hindi hindi nga nila, hindi sila, hindi nila na, na laman, like earlier in their life. So, for example, for adults now or for older people, they just feel that well, it's not important or it's all a lang or they exaggerate. But in all honesty parang they should actually uh, learn more and also learn a lot about these new things happening also in our world syempre para ma-adjust din sila in dealing with people kasi syempre important yun in any job or in anything you're venturing into oh kasi i have for example i have friends they always rant about uh, government about what's happening right mm-hmm. now but then they always say i'm so stressed So yeah. being ganon, that's why I tell them, you know, try not to run, try not to ano, and just, you know, try to react na lang, put space with those issues and try not to react. Oh, but but uh, it's also good for you. But yeah, that's the yun way of coping up nowadays because di natin di natin na control eh, and that's what I've been telling people. And what we can do right now is, well, I pray and you know follow. Uh, stay at home, and if you're sick or you're feeling, uh, you know you're not feeling well, try to quarantine yourself. Parang ganon. Yeah, for sure. I agree with them and with that point. And it's really great that people must also learn to to accept these truths in our country also. So for your one question, it's a fun question lang, and it's from a podcast in a sports podcast in the US. And they ask their guests if you had the choice to have five dinner guests, dead or alive, who would you choose? It's like a formal dinner, parang ganon. You can invite anyone, dead or alive. You can have educational conversations or whatever. Any person, any any five people that you'd invite. Any. Yeah, I think like any, kahit foreigner, any. Yeah. Talaga. Yeah. <laughs> Fun question lang. <laughs> hmm. Siguro. Uh... Well, yung ano talaga during this pandemic, excuse is my family in Dubai. So sila yung ialagay ko. My mom, my brother, yeah. my sister-in-law, um my baby niece that I haven't met yet. They were mm. supposed to go uh uh come home no March and mm. my little sister. Five of them. I really miss them. I think there was a time that I was thinking to go to Dubai during the pandemic because I really miss them. Pero yun nga, pinigilan ako ng asawa ko na parang not yeah. safe, better not yeah. kids. Yeah. So, so yun, five of them. I I think yun yung siguro yun yung time na nasasad ako pag nami-miss ko sila. Yeah. Been a while. Sure. It's been a while. Yeah, that's really a tough sacrifice lalo na ngayong pandemic kasi nga it's really not Back safe to, five to travel. Sila. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not safe to travel now, mahirap eh. Kaya it's really a tough sacrifice for you and your oh, other your then family it, members. The, then it although And it's sad that because they weren't able to be in the wedding. Oh, I really miss them. Oh, iba pa rin pag complete yung family. Mm-hmm. So for the final question, I also ask my guests these. Um, if I'm gonna ask you, like, sino yung magandang guest sa podcast? Because ako, I just message literally anyone from any sport. Like, hindi lang naman volleyball, pero basketball or any football, anything I can. Ina man yun tinatakaw kung sport. So sino yung ma bibigay mo? mga tao na magandang story na masishare sa podcast ko? I think uh, may, may mga magandang story and very inspirational. Uh, Manila Santos, Chuck Cruz, and Abby Maragno, mga naging captain nung time ko. They have good, really good stories and very 
passionate about the sport and life. So, marami ka talagang uh, matutunan sa kanila. Yeah, that's really great. I've heard their interviews with other media personalities and madami ka matututunan even if they haven't been in Lasal na for like how many years. Pero syempre yung mga yung journey nila, parang you can still apply it. You can still apply the lessons you learn from their life to our lives also. So, I I agree with those guests. So, Yeah, so uh, lastly, I just want to say thank you again for coming into the podcast, Me- Melissa. And thank you so much also for taking up some of your time today, even if you're really busy now at home. And yeah, yun lang, I really appreciate it. And yeah, do you have any last message? Um, I hope na marami ka pang ma-interview uh, na players para mag-inspire sa kabataan na ngayon, lalo na pandemic, um, ang daming uncertainties, and it's one way that can inspire them to just keep on going and keep on working hard for their dreams. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much again. And lastly, is it okay if we can take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, I'll take a screenshot now. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much.